Hey everybody, hang on, I need to get all my stuff together here. Oh, 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 oh. Yay, Instagram's working. Why? I don't know why I have such trouble with this. Okay, hold on here. Hey, happy quilter, number one. Okay, I'm on. <laughs> Hi everybody, we're gonna give it a few more minutes. I just thought I'd jump on early. Um, I am, it's Friday evening. I decided to try an hour later and it messed some people up, so I'm sorry. Um, it's five o'clock here on, um, in Seattle. So it could be eight o'clock where you're at if you're on the West Coast. And tonight's live is going to, we're gonna talk about cleaning. Proper cleaning chemicals, um, improper quilting or cleaning chemicals. And I was going to show you some stuff that I've been working on this week. So, <clears throat> how's everybody doing? Day 1000 in quarantine. I know, that's an exaggeration. But it kind of feels like day 1000. I, uh, I've decided there's a meme out that I saw which was kind of hilarious. Uh, and it said that um, I've decided my favorite things to do are eat out at restaurants, shop at non-essential stores, and touch my face. Right here. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> um, I've had, I'm going to do a, another live on Monday. I normally would do it on Sunday, but it's Easter. So I thought you guys spend time with your family, some more time with your family. Um, and then I would join you. We could get together on Monday night. The title of the um, live is going to be what is that horrible smell? It's a very common question in my workshops when it comes to dealing with the sewing machine. So we're going to talk about what could possibly um, stink about your sewing machine or its box and how to fix it. So if you are particularly sensitive to smells, the featherweight may not be the right machine for you because even a good running non-stinky machine might have some, um, some odors to it. But we, there are some things you can do to um, to get rid of them. So that's our Monday talk. We're going to do 4 p.m. on Monday, uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then I will um, defer my Ask the Doctor, because we usually do that on Sunday nights series, until Wednesday next week. And I um, So if you have any questions for me for Ask the Doctor, uh, you can email in to info at featherweightdoctor.com. All right. Well, we are one minute past five, so let's get started. Uh, we cover this type of question in my workshops, the cleaning question. There are definitely the good chemicals to use, and then there are bad chemicals to use. And when I talk about cleaning chemicals, because I am the daughter of a drill sergeant who had all girls, if that tells you how my household was run, uh, when I was a little girl, I liken a lot of things to military analogies. So when I talk about cleaning chemi chemicals, I think about weaponry and level of cleaning weaponry. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Emmy. It's my friend with her little girls. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about the least strong chemical first and then work our way up to the big guns, if you know what I mean. So the first layer or the first, uh, um, the first round of cleaning is just a dry microfiber towel. A lot of these machines, some of them do have like significant buildup of oil and grease over the years, but a lot of them are just dusty and they need to be, uh, they need to be dusted off. So a dry microfiber towel, I would concentrate, I'm gonna tip the camera down so you guys can see it a little better. I would concentrate on areas that hold a lot of dust. Okay, tip this down. Oop, whoop, sorry. Uh, so the first area that holds a lot of dust is underneath this motor mount. Um, if it's really bad, I will loosen the motor mount screw, actually totally remove it, and slide the motor out of... Uh, 
out of the way and totally clean underneath here. This is definitely an area of significant buildup and and lint and th threads, spare threads, just disgustingness. So definitely make sure you um, clean underneath here. The other area that is a significant buildup is in the bobbin area here. So you're gonna wanna just wipe out with your dry microfiber towel all of the linties and such. We're still at a, with a dry rag level of ammunition, cleaning ammunition. And the other area that things tend to really kind of build up is behind the motor mount, behind the neck of the machine. So under the motor mount and behind the motor in between the neck of the machine is another source of um, buildup. Uh, what you can do, oh shoot, I thought I had everything here and I don't. If you have a screwdriver, some of these areas are kind of tiny, too tiny for your finger. You can wrap the towel around your screwdriver and very carefully get in those tighter areas a little bit better. So, bless you. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter just sneezed. <laughs> so once you have, feel like you've given her a significant uh, rub down with the microfiber cloth, then you can go to the next level of ammunition. Um, now, most of the time, cleaning ammunition. Most of the time, this is exactly where I stop. Like, there's no additional, um, sorry. Oop, did I just do something? Nope, okay, we're good. Uh, you don't have to go anything further than this next step. The next step is basically giving her a sponge bath, basically. So you get one big bowl of warm water with a couple of drops of dish washing soap in it. So one bowl of, a big bowl of warm water to one or two drops of dish washing soap. And then you're going to saturate your, your rag and get her wet and then almost totally wring her out because you don't want to have a bunch of water around here but you do want to make sure she's damp and then you're going to go to town scrubbing the those same areas and the areas across the decking and across the top um i bought a machine one time in mesa arizona at an auction and it was pretty obvious it was a white featherweight that this machine had lived in a house that had a lot of nicotine use in it because there was brown like everywhere like in the lamp and all of the different cracks and crevices where things get uh get stuck um and i got to the soap and water part and i spent about two hours on her every bit of that brown nicotine had come off just with soap and water so that's pretty phenomenal um and if there is additional buildup on your machine you have to be really careful with this next step. I call it the big guns of cleaning chemicals uh, because if you have pr places in your, um, where there's clear coat missing on the, your machine, this next chemical might make that worse. So you might have to stop short at the soap and water level of cleaning. Um, but the, the only chemical that's safe to use on this shellac finish is called naphtha it's not the only chemical but it's the one that i use so naphtha is lighter fluid if you have one of those like zippo um lighters if you're a, if you have one that you refill that zippo lighter fluid is the same stuff as this i buy this big can at like one of the big box stores like home depot or lowe's or ace uh, or um, any of the smaller ones like the do it center um they would also carry this, and I buy it by the quart. This is the smallest container that you can buy at those places, so sometimes those Zippo lighter refills, which are a much smaller bottle, is a better bet for you. But anyway, you what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a different, not a wet rag, but a different microfiber towel. You're gonna take a clean one, and one that you're gonna get the chemical on, and go outside, because this stuff is super stinky. Uh, and you don't want to breathe it in an enclosed space. So go outside and you're going to spray a, a good amount of that naphtha on your rag and you're basically going to start wiping it on and then grab your dry towel and you're going to wipe it off. So like the Karate Kid movie, wax on, wax off. Same idea. So naphtha is what I call the big guns. If you have a machine, I've purchased several over the years, if you have a machine that has like a sticker from a sewing machine shop, 
why they stick it on the front of your machines, I do not know. You can put it underneath the machine and not on the finish of the machine, but it never fails. If I do a class with 10 people in it, at least one person has a sewing machine sticker on the machine and you wanna take that off, you can peel it off, but it might leave some residue. You can use the naphtha in a rag to get the residue of the sticker off. That way you don't wanna use Okay, let's talk about real quick what you don't want to use. So you never want to use any cleaner that is alcohol-based. I'll answer Nola, Nola good dog, good bad dog, hang on one sec. So never any alcohol-based cleaners, citrus-based cleaners, or um, ammonia-based cleaners. So never any 409, never... Um, Windex, no goof off, no crud cutter, no nothing like that around the outside surface. Um, I'm answering Nola's good bad dog's question real quick. I know that's not your name, that's your dog's name. I don't know your first name though. Um, you don't have to rinse. The question is, and after the naphtha, do you need to rinse it with water again? No, because the naphtha will totally dissipate with the air. So you do not need to wash it again. Um, my husband, back in the day before we had become the featherweight doctors, uh, he and I would go shop garage sales for these little machines because I would, I've been a machine quilting. Oh, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. <laughs> I'll stop calling you your dog's name. It's probably your dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we had gone to a garage sale and uh, we, we were leaving the garage sale and my husband catches out of the corner of his eye a little black box. You know that moment, you're like, oh, we found one. He barely got the car in park before he jumped out of the car to go over to the guy. And the guy, you know, it was kind of sitting on the ground of this dirty garage. And my husband's like, so what's in the little black box? And the guy's like, I don't know. I think it's a sewing machine. And he's like, do you know if it works? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I haven't taken it out of the box in, you know, a decade or whatever. And Andy's like... I'll give you 30 bucks for it. The guy's like, okay. <laughs> so we bring this machine home and it's a 1935 pre-war featherweight with the beautiful scrolly faceplate and the chrome hand wheel. And it was so nice, except for one thing. Obviously the owner, the original owner, at some point they must have done like Christmas themed, like a scotch tape because it had like holly leaf scotch tape, someone had used the wrong tape and it had been on there for two decades. Now, just to be clear, if you need to make a seam guide line for your featherweight, use blue painter's tape. It does not leave residue and it won't, don't leave it sitting on there when you're done. Always make sure, because in case you put the machine away and don't take it out for 10 years, you still don't want that paint sitting on the finish for 10 years. But anyway, so I thought this was before I knew any better, friends. So I'm just going to say I had not been trained. I had no idea. I just knew I liked these little machines. This was probably 15 years ago. My husband was so excited about this little cute machine because it was definitely the oldest one we'd ever seen since they started being made in 33. And so it was an oldie. And it was in really nice condition other than that tape. And one day I thought, I'm going to get that tape off because that's really annoying. And this is a really nice machine. And I used goof off to get the tape off because that's what I would have used on something else. Yeah, no, totally stripped all of the finish off of it, including the decals. I cried. My husband cried. It was a bad, it was a bad deal. So don't, don't make that mistake. No, no citrus, no ammonia, no alcohol based cleaners. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, just naphtha or lighter fluid. Good old soap and water. Um, I have noticed that sometimes if I have a rag that has some oil, like WD-40 or um, some sewing machine oil on it, and I want to give her a nice little shine, I'll go, <laughs> Meredith, I know, I will go through and kind of use a little bit of, it has a little bit of oil on it, and it does give it a really nice shine, not enough to get on my fabric or anything. You can, on the inside of the machine, use scent-free kerosene, to clean the gears and stuff, that'll be part of the What's That Smell or live next week. Um, so yeah, those are pretty much what we use around the shop. 
WD-40 you can use in very small quantities, I believe. We'll see if my husband chimes in. I don't use I don't use WD-40 very often. I I almost strictly stick to the naphtha and soap and water. But WD-40 is a cleaning um, solvent. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? We didn't really talk about polish. You guys want to talk about polishing once you have all the um, the icky stuff off? Okay, super. Someone's like, great info. Okay, let's just keep going. So for um, my husband and I are students of Dave McCollum. He is a pioneer, uh, which is now retired, of the fe uh, featherweight renaissance up here in the Pacific Northwest. And he is kind of known for using household, yes, I yes, you can use WD-40 in small quantities. Okay, cool. I got, my husband texted me, the doctor's watching. Oh, there's a question. How do you clean if you have a scratchy clear coat? So if you have a scratchy clear coat, you do not want to go above the soap and water level because the chemical, the naphtha chemical with a breach in the clear coat will actually make it worse. So you do not, if you have a scratchy clear coat, you do not want to use the chemical, which will then strip. It could get underneath and in between the clear coat and the paint, and that would be bad. It would Your clear coat would start going way faster. So let's talk about um, polish. So Dave is of the school of thought. I see residue from, hang on one sec, Nancy Schroeder. Um, so he's of the school of thought that general household stuff is better than going out and spending money on specialty products. And so um, Dave McCollum recommends Carnuba-based car wax that you can just buy at O'Reilly's or Shucks or another automotive, uh, another automotive um, repair shop. Don't, don't, I don't. I don't see what you're saying, honey. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, the um, and so you can once you have the the bulk of the oil and grease off of the machine, you do you can go through and uh, use a carnauba based car wax to to buff her up. And it, you would do it like you were doing a car, where you kind of spread it on and let it dry, and then wipe it off with another clear microfiber towel. Ooh, you have a first run 1933, and that's your only problem. I love those machines. I have a first run 34. So just one manufacturing run after your 33. Someday I'll have a 33. What was the question? Do you remember? How would you remove duct tape residue? Oh, duct tape residue. The naphtha. Sometimes someone asked about duct tape revenue. Residue? <laughs> revenue. Hello. <laughs> um, if you have one of those pampered chef with cracks still be careful with water it can get under also okay so don't get too aggressive with the water soap and water either if you have the really scratchy clear coat especially um is it cavernous 1899 on your 33 be really careful with her because she's valuable just because of her age so you don't want to like make her in worse condition you can use the wax with the scratchy clear coat, but if she's really heavily covered in oil and grease from her extended age, if you put the polish or the wax over the top of it, it'll just fog it up and make it look worse. So what I might recommend doing on that particular machine because of its extended age and its value is if you send me a couple pictures to the shop, um, info at featherweightdoctor.com, I'll look at it first. So just to make sure you don't do anything that you can't undo to that that little heirloom. So, um, all right, I think, is that all the questions? Oh, residue, thank you. Duct tape residue. I have one of those Pampered Chef scrapers for my, um, <laughs> Meredith says, send it to the doctor. Uh, if, if you have one of those Pampered Chef plastic scrapers, they're not, um, they're not, abrasive and they're not metal but they have a little bit of a lip on them sometimes you have to leave put the naphtha on and let it set on that duct tape a little bit to loosen up that stuff and sometimes I use my fingernail and kind of help work it off of the finish or that little plastic pampered scrape uh, pampered chef scraper to help get loosen up the the residue if it's really crusted on there it might take a couple of different applications to get the duct tape off and that's such a bummer that someone put duct tape on it. And my 1934 had that surgical tape, that fabric surgical tape. And it, 
Um, I, it took me like three times of sitting there really gently cause I was trying, she was an extended age also. And, and I wanted to make sure to take good care of her. Uh, cleaning for the cases, Nancy Schroeder, um, if there is a smell to it, you can make a ble bleach water 50-50 combo and use a rag to wipe out the inside. There is a known fungus on machines that have been stored in um, humid places that will grow in the glue and sometimes the bleach water combination helps on the inside or you can stick a real like incandescent light bulb that generates heat in the box and leave it on overnight to help get to help kill the musty mildew smell. On the outside, it's soap and water and then shoe, black shoe polish, polish and a brush to try and resuscitate the, the case back to life. If there's signs of the wooden box that are showing that the fabric has been removed, I use a black Sharpie to make them black again and then I'll do the black shoe polish and buff up the case. Oh, sunshine too. Meredith says if you don't have the incandescent light bulbs, if you leave it, I mean not in Seattle because we don't have nice days here, but if you do live in a place where you have heat from the sun, you can leave it outside and that will help to kill the, uh, oh, thanks, Inkerloo. How you doing? She's in Seattle. <laughs> You're welcome, Nancy. Thanks for all these great questions. Um, it looks like I might have some questions on Facebook. Clean water. Oh, my husband's responding to people. Australia's on. That's pretty awesome. Hi, Robin. All right. Very cool. Well, you guys have been awesome. I didn't think this was going to be a long call, but I'm glad that you guys have so many questions and everybody is home and has nothing better to do than to take care of their machines. So I think that's pretty phenomenal. Um, a machine out of the orphanage is going home to New York, New York, New York. On Monday, um, I had a special little machine come in. Her name was Jeanette, after the original owner. And ironically, the lady that purchased her, her mother's name was Jeanette, too. So how cool is that? That machine will be off to New York on Monday, and she'll be making face masks along with the rest of us. Oh, before I let you go, I wanted to show you what else I did today. Um, so, oh, and to make an addendum to my thing last week. We did a live a few days ago where I was talking about packing your machine up for travel. And we talked about the taking the bobbin winder off and taking the spool pin off before you pack it. Would you please give a beginner tip what to do with the starter? Oh, Ray, what was that question? Is the beach water in the case or inside the machine? Say that question one more time. It's on your phone. I, I, my phone is on the thing. Was the bleach water in the case or inside the machine? Oh, the bleach water 50-50 combo was for cleaning the fabric on the inside of the case, not the machine. Thank you for asking that question. I It says, what, oh, right there, I see it. Jenny Walk, okay. And then I just bought a featherweight. What would you recommend I do first? I love that question. First of all, welcome to the club. Some people call us a cult. We're not a cult. We're just a very enthusiastic club. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure she's well lubricated before you use her. Unless you know that this particular machine was um, well maintained before she came to your possession. I wouldn't use her very much at all before you've gone through and done full oil and lubrication points. Zoe, if you go to the my Facebook page, the... Um, the oil and lubrication video is still posted on my Facebook page under Featherweight Doctor, and it'll show you all the points to hit. She probably needs to have her motor serviced too, so she hasn't changed out her grease and her motor. That's going to want to be done before you do much sewing on her also. If you email the, <clears throat> the shop, I can give you kind of the rundown, and that's going to be... Meredith says that's not hard to do at all. Um, if you, I can kind of give you the rundown. In fact, that's going to be the topic of one of my conversations next week. I feel like we're all going a little bit quarantine crazy. And because we can't go out and about, people are doing a lot of shopping on eBay and um, other Craigslist and all of that. And I've gotten like four or five calls today from people who picked up something on eBay or uh, another auction medium and the machine showed up and it wasn't quite what they thought it was going to be and so I think for everybody's benefit that's going to be the topic of one of my lives next week probably on Wednesday what to do if you're new to featherweights and, and one just showed up on your 
on your doorstep and you want to make sure that you take good care of her before you start using her. So anyway, what I was going to say was I have some new uh, quilted accessories that I was working on today and it goes hand in hand with forgetting one very important piece for uh, the travel thing. So spool pin removal, bobbin removal when you're traveling with your machine and you need to have something between, can you guys see this okay? Something between, see how the, the bed extension hits the, uh, the spool pin or the, the face plate knob? We sell and make, and I'm probably gonna be putting this pattern out for free next week, with pre-quilted fabrics, a, a, a uh, cover that looks like this, and I just got this new shiny, look at that, it's iridescent purple fabric so this will be available on the website next week bed extension covers and the tool bags for the screwdrivers I'm in the process of making those but let me show you I have one right here let me grab one hand in. it's black so it's a little harder to see but this is the bed extension cover so you also want to make sure that when you're traveling with your machine that there's a bed extension cover protecting the decking of the machine and your bed extension from the faceplate screw, as you can see. It'll make contact, but it won't make a divot. So that was just a little amendment to our live a few days ago. One of my good um, customers up in Bellingham, Washington was like, hey, how do you protect this? And I was, some people put those um, little rubber, thumb size rubber, things on this so when you put this up it doesn't make that noise you hear that click uh and the needle down exactly meredith press your foot down exactly uh but i think those make it hard to go in the case because if it's too big of a plastic knob this won't go completely up and then when you go to set it in its box this gets caught on the accessory box so <clears throat> i like these much better because they're thinner but still provide extra protection so glad you showed us that. I've been confusing. The, yep. Inger. No, no, honey. This, <laughs> the pocket is where your foot pedal goes. And then this is your bed extension cover. That's funny. All right. Well, I think that's it, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Again, my next live, because Easter is on Sunday, will be Monday. And we're going to go with 4 p.m. So it's not this confusing 5 p.m., 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It will be on, it, the, 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 the live will be called, What's That Musty Smell? We're going to talk about that. Oh, you like, isn't that pretty, the tongue and groove? And we're in the basement too, which makes the ceiling feel taller. I don't feel like I'm in the cave. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. I will talk to you all next week.